Hey, what's up guys? It's T-Bone here and welcome back to another episode of playing Legendary Game of Heroes. So there's a few things I wanted to do in today's episode. One is obviously to cover the upcoming event, uh, give the gifts of water, and also go over some of the uh, videos for, that is already available on the network's uh, Facebook page. And then we're also going to talk about the cards themselves. And then we're going to do a quick recap of the previous event. So first, let's go into the news feed and take a look at uh, the upcoming event. It's called Give the Gift of Water, and you notice that it's a charity event for water. And if you look at in, look at the charity uh, section, water is a nonprofit organization bringing clean and safe drinking water to people in developing countries. This is the second time now that network is uh, providing uh, giving to this organization and I think it's for a really good cause and you can see that uh, here at the top at the end of the event the number one through number 10 top ranking guilds on the global guild leaderboard will each have 5,000 of the amount raised donated in their name to charity okay and they're also going to be giving a hundred thousand dollar donation uh, to help there and so I think that this is for a great cause uh, so make sure that we participate just you know, just to, to be able to show some support here. Uh, and, it, you know, we also benefit from it as well. You'll see that uh, as you're playing through, they're going to give you options to collect these rewards that you can then trade with your guildmates. And each time you open these gifts, you can use them to open up uh, items in here. You can see that in the reward exchange. So I believe uh, when you open up these flasks, you're going to get flasks as rewards. And when you open them, you're going to get these, um, you know, these tokens. And you can use these tokens to exchange for rewards. And you can see this is pretty cool. You can get the orb of XP2. You can get um, legend uh, relic shards. You can also get uh, these diamond shards. Uh, basically, all good things. All right. So I am definitely excited for the orb of XP, uh, the relic. Uh, sort of the legend relic shards and the diamond shards because they take forever for me to collect. And you can also potentially get a uh, oceanic om om omnibus relic, which is a guild versus guild attacker uh, relic, and it applies to all water heroes. But I think you can enchant it for um, you can enchant it. We can see here uh, where you can actually increase attack, increase the health, and also counter. Uh, gem silence. So if you have a hard time with gem silence, this is a relic that you can use in guild versus guild All Right, and now let's take a look at the uh, the videos. Uh, so if you look at the original video It's a little harder to follow because uh, it has two videos side by side So what I've done is I just zoomed in and I'm gonna break it down a little bit What you're seeing here is the uh, full event deck from right to left You've got uh, Drake people to support cart and you have uh, the the master collection card uh, Bashma followed by um, Cory Sande, which is the event main event card, and then Ultra Rare uh, Ethereal Drake. Now, this card, uh, this deck, is the first ever Slayer version of the pure Halloween deck. Okay, When I say pure, I mean you're able to generate power gems just by intensity alone without any other condition. Okay, And you can see there, uh, each of the cards uh, on turn two dealt over 6 billion damage, and the Ultra Ultra Rare dealt 9 billion. I wish that they had shown the relics, but I believe it's the same as the last week's uh, sort of um, format where they just upgraded the uh, the event relics to six uh, level six. I, and I believe all the cards are max level. Now what they have shown also this time around is a different deck that features two support cards and the main event card and two other cards to help out. This is more of a likely scenario for how you might actually play the deck and what they have here for other cards is a maelstrom and a circassa right and you can see here that the uh, it looks like they have just one relic because you can see that the intensity for fable is increasing uh just five at a time so i believe that that's that's coming from the the relic uh because i don't believe there's any passive uh intensity generation from the cards themselves and you can see also the the original video actually shifted the um the screen so i had to catch up a little bit anyways uh i believe this is using three keys here you can see based by the health and they have a couple of uh, uh relics for the um Sircasa deck here i think that they could probably use a different option like i mean if you have different options i definitely think that they uh you know we could change this up with Bodana, I think Bodana would actually outperform here because um, the problem with 
uh, Maelstrom and Circassa is if you're using just one Circassa, you need much higher intensity to really uh, fill up the board here. And you can see that you were able, they were only able to use uh, Circassa one time here and not really able to, to deal a ton of damage there. I think it was 3 billion total. And I think that we can, can be done a little bit better. Now, if you notice a little bit, I'm going to just quickly do a, do a rewind here uh, because we're going to talk about it later. So I just wanted to showcase it here. Uh, take a look at the health. Right now, it's at 14,139. And when it attacks, you can see that the health is actually going to go up by a little bit. So right now, it goes up to 15,000. Uh, that is because uh, the support car actually has a passive heal. And now... Notice that the intensity for Fable is a 60, and that would explain why the health increase seems to be pretty low. We'll talk about that in more detail, okay? And so let's go to the end of this video. You'll see basically, um, based on this particular deck, it can't quite take down a level 30 uh, boss just yet, but we can talk about you know what we can potentially do to make that, uh, to, to improve on that. And before we can do that, though, we do want to make sure to talk about the cards because even though it's a Halloween deck, there are some differences. So the first thing is uh, we'll take a look at the Ultra Rare card or well, the Ultra Ultra Rare Bashma. This one is exactly the same as what you expect, like Vascor and, uh, you know, uh, Luna Morph and also uh, Chronos. These are all the same cards that you expect. It j creates one Water Power Gem. It's a Fable card. And it also creates an additional one for every eight stacks of Fable Intensity, has a nine card charge rate, and seven turn cooldown. Exactly the same as you would expect here, except it's Slayer. Same passive, it increases a drop rate of water gems for the first three turns. And uh, in terms of the counter skill, it dispels Judgment. Okay. Now, I am personally excited because this is a Fable deck, so that means I'm going to get another relic that's a Fable relic to finally uh, fill up my, uh, my relics for my Light Fable team because I currently am missing one uh, for that. So I'm pretty excited about that. And also, I believe this is going to generate Power Gem 2, as we have seen in the video. The Ultra Rare card, Ethereal Drake, does the same thing. Uh, at 6 stars, it's going to uh, create Power Gem 1 plus 1 for every 10 stacks instead of 20 stacks of Fable Intensity at 5 stars. Same turn cooldown and same charge rate. So up until this point, everything's the same. What's different now is Kori Sunday, the event deck, it's not a nuke card okay so you don't use this card to actually just nuke down your enemies instead look at the battle skill uh, actually i think it's better if i look at the six star version of this card if you look at the battle skill this card will uh, increase the intensity uh, the intensity and increase the fable hero attack by 55 percent plus three percent per 20 fable intensity and so what we saw earlier in the uh, sort of the base deck at 60 intensity it will be a you know, 9% uh, increase plus 55 for a total of 64% increase for all Fable heroes. Has a three turn cooldown, but this attack bonus will last for two turns. Kind of like similar with anytime you, um, you know, when you revive, it, it gives you a attack boost for two turns. Similar idea here, except this is coming from a battle skill. And there's a passive now that decreases your damage taken by 10% for the first three turns. So it increases with your survivability a little bit more. Counter skill dispels weaken, so that's why you should expect the bosses to, to, to cast. And then uh, the last card here is the, the support card, uh, Drake Veeple. Now, this card actually had me really wondering for a long time. I had debated about this and asked a lot of questions, uh, and I think I finally got some clarity. So this battle skill for this card increases Fable Intensity by 10, as you would expect from this type of deck, but it has additional properties. It will create 5 uh, Water Gems and increases Recovery by 5% per 5 Fable Intensity. Let's be clear here. It only creates five water gems and it does not create any more but it will do this over two turns so that means turn one it'll create five uh, five water gems turn two it will create five water gems and the next time you activate this uh the skill regardless of intensity count it's still going to create only five water gems okay so this is i want to make sure that this is clear uh the second thing is it does increase recovery so this is where uh it increases recovery by intensity and then the passive is every time you attack it will also heal for that 25%. So when you use the spell skill, you can now heal in two ways, matching heart gems or just attack and use the passive. If you just use the passive, you'll heal for you know a quarter of what you get from matching heart gems. But 
If your intensity is high enough, just by attacking, you should heal for a good amount, especially at six stars, uh, at uh, using three keys. All right. So this is going to be an interesting deck here in that typically this Halloween type deck, health is always an issue. Okay, it's always an issue with the health, but you, that's because everything's attacker. But they've changed it so that uh, you know you have warrior in 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 here, so that you increase some of the health, and everything else is attacker. Let me make sure I see. So everything else is attacker. So that's typically the reason why uh, Halloween type decks is usually a little weaker. But by having this card that will deal with the um, the health issue, I think this is going to round it out pretty nicely. So again, pure Halloween deck. It's going to be really strong, um, but the thing is, you know, it requires ultra rare and ultra ultra rare, right? Uh, the other thing I want to point out is some of the cards that are available for this Takumi seems like isn't a very good card at all because of the battle skill. But what's nice is it does uh, provide additional damage health boost for all water attacker heroes. So if you get him, you can at least use that to power up your other water attackers um, if that's an option for you, right? Um, Yuko is okay. She this is pre-intensity and her battle skill just deals, you know, just attacks five times with a maximum of fifteen hundred percent of attack. It doesn't really do much now nowadays. Skybound is another ultra rare during the Icarus time, and it it is a you know it's a water gem destroy and also creator at four at six stars it'll create four water gems and destroy four earth gems. So that's kind of nice. Now what I want to do is talk about some of the other you know I talk about well the fact is using Circassa isn't necessarily a great uh, the best choice, but if you have nothing else, then obviously that's what you go with. But what I'm listing here is all the water gem uh, creators that you have in the game up to this point. So you have a Skuka. The only thing is, uh, this is a commander card rather than a slayer card, but it does create two water gems, and then it'll basically uh, have unlimited amount of gems. So with one card, you can fill up the board. Circassa can do the same thing, but you, it requires uh, Maelstrom uh, to be in the team as well, so that kind of reduces effectiveness given that it takes up an additional slot. Bodana is really nice. It's the most recent uh, Slayer card that does this. Okay, so it does create one one water gem and has a twenty intensity requirement for spirit intensity. I like her because uh, I think she's probably the best option out of all of them in a Slayer deck. Freya is another option. Uh, it's a little older card, but it does get powered by intensity. Uh, in that, it, but it has a higher intensity requirement. Uh, in that, it requires thirty God intensity. Finally, we just showed you uh, Skybound. So these are some of the cards that you can throw in your water deck. Based on what you saw in the Facebook video there, I think you can build a similar deck, but I would recommend using uh, Bodana. Another reason why I think Bodana is a good choice because the relic that comes with that deck actually creates Power Gem 2 uh, if, there's, you know, uh, if there's more than 12 water gems. So in that case, it's actually a little bit better, uh, you know, to use because you get better relic you have uh, i think better damage i think bodana has a, a higher um has higher attack than than uh you can actually see right so at level 59 the attack is 2100 and at level 57 i guess this is probably the same so attack wise i think it's going to be similar uh but you're getting a better relic out of that right so this is what i would uh i would i would, I would recommend now finally the last thing i wanted to do is i want to talk about um last week's event okay one of the things that i think uh is unfortunate and i'm going to use a video to show my uh my point here this was where they introduced a new um mechanic the aegis uh, skill that actually will prevent certain skills of your heroes from uh from activating in this case healing was uh basically prevented okay so my typical deck using Aladdin, it wouldn't have worked given the amount of damage that the boss would have dealt. At you know level three fifty five, you know it would have been very similar. But the thing is, I think a day after the event started, they actually reduced the overall damage of the boss, which I thought in the end wasn't. Uh, you know, I, I I think that they could have could have kept the damage the same. The reason is because once you got to, to level 300, the damage continued to be really low, okay? And so I was able to just use this deck and bring in Aladdin for additional power gems, not for healing, but for additional power gems so I can deal more damage here. Uh, and it wasn't as challenging as it could have been, right? And I never even got to use my, um, my Buari because 
I never died. And so I think this is where, um, you know, keeping like what I would have recommended here is like, I think keeping the attack lower in the beginning was OK, but I would have liked to see a much higher scaling of attack uh, as you go up in level. Because keep in mind, like, you know, once you get to higher level, you you do want to make sure that you reward those that work hard for a deck or those that did get the event deck and you want to present them with the challenge that was intended. And so my recommendation would have been, uh, you know, instead of a linear uh, scaling of the, the damage here, I think making it easy for the first, you know, 150, even 200 somewhat levels would have been okay. But up to 300, I would have liked to see more of exponential attack because that would have really, I think, forced different gameplay, different game styles. It would have forced, you know, uh, using three keys as opposed to just using one key all the time. And I think that is an opportunity that I would, you know, that that could have been taken. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. But I'm hoping that in the future, if we're considering players of all levels, I think a more exponential uh, sort of um, increase in attack or in the health to provide more and more, um, you know, Difficulty as you go up in level is appropriate, right? Uh, you're catering for all different play styles, and I think that it's reasonable to expect that a level 300 boss to be difficult to, to, to defeat, right? So that's just my personal opinion. And then, and the second thing is, there's a lot of questions that um, that were raised around the effectiveness of Thula. Now I know that it's it's really difficult to to really think about this card as a car that generates a um, power gem of a weak affinity. Like, what does that mean? Like, how does that, how, how, how can, how can that be used? And so I played around a little bit and I've really been thinking about it. And I think one of the ways you can actually benefit or to use it uh, is to put her, put her actually in a, in a fire deck. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, bring in somebody here that isn't going to be a problem. So let's go ahead and use Eva. So what I'm what I'm showing here is uh, this is a, an extreme deck where I'm using four um, four domies just to prove a point, all right? And what I'm trying to show here is in the situation where um, where you're just using uh, Thula in a fire deck. Now keep in mind that she's a fire warrior and Domi does boost her as well. You can use her battle skill just to help with the power gem creation. Right, just with with the power gems, you know, it's something that that would help with the damage, right? Uh, but with Domi type decks, the thing is, you you will eventually fill up the board, and when that happens, uh, no matter what you do, you're going to end up incurring a um, two second loss to the time, uh, which can be very crucial in certain situations. And so here, what you can do is instead of uh, wasting those two seconds. You can use uh, Thula and the fact that she does uh, create off gem, uh, off affinity power gems uh, to, your, to your advantage. Okay, so I think I have enough intensity here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and activate Domi. And what you'll see is the board is completely full. Now I'm going to use Thula. It generates two uh, fire, two water power gems. And really what I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to use that to cancel out the time. Right. This is the uh, this is the trick that a lot of people use. Where if you have, uh, you know, full board of, uh, board of power gems, use another uh, skill card to create a off affinity power gem and use that to stop the timer. So this is where I think this card could be effective. And the fact is, you're still running a, a fire deck. It's just that this will now uh, decrease your total time you have to wait uh, for your damage, and you're not really losing out on your damage because. Um, because Thula will still damage, deal damage, and is boosted uh, by by Domi, so you're so it's not that bad of a trade off. So, yes, that's all for this video. What I wanted to show was was you know just kind of some thoughts here and some preview. Uh, so let me know if this is this is helpful. Uh, love to hear some feedback. And uh, again, thanks for all the support and thanks for watching. I'll see you next episode. Take care.